banned out by the red side once again. This time around, of course, it's NIP. Looks like the next one will be Evelyn. So again, H2K focusing on those junglers. They know that Jarvan is a strong jungler for them. They're forcing Ko onto Elise. Yeah, it looks to be the case. They could also uh, pull a, a 180 and first pick Elise if they wanted to go that route. Twitch is still available. Jax is still available. As you've already mentioned, the likes of LeBlanc is still up. So there's a lot of champions that both of these teams could work towards. And it actually looks like H2K are going to be playing a different top laner for this matchup. With Jax being banned away, it means Mozilla needs to look at or think about the likes of Trundle, Shivana, Renekton, etc. Well, final ban will be for NIP. Let's see what it's going to be. It's going to be coming in a second. It is Kale once again. So NIP sticking with the same three bans as game one. And HDK, the only ones to switch things up. Lulu was up. So in the previous game, because NIP were blue side, they didn't have to ban Kassadin. They banned Lulu instead. And with Lulu being available, it may be a consideration for the Ninjas of Pajamas. Thresh first pick. That does surprise me. Clearly, that's a bit of a worry for AOD maybe in there. Of course, that does leave a number of options open. The Rat being one of them. And again, Yasuo locked in. So NIP sticking with their guns from game one. So if I were in HDK's position, I would consider locking in a Shivana. Shivana can do very well in the top lane against a multitude of champions and can also uh, take it away from Mozilla, who may want to get the knock-up combo. The only risk of that route is then seeing a Lulu being locked in by NIP, and then it's very difficult as a Shivana to deal with Lulu in that top lane. It can be very frustrating. So there, there is a lot of champions, but for the time being, NIP seem committed to trying that sort of pick assassination type combo of Twitch and Yasuo. Well, I'm pretty sure it's not going to be Zed, who is just uh, hovered over a number of options coming out. Are we going to see that Jarvan? Are we going to see the Elise for Trashy? Will they lock in maybe the AD Karras, of course? Number of options open. Don't think it's going to be like Malzaha. Playing with the crowd. H2K are 1-0 up. They can have some fun with this one. Um, with a few seconds left on the clock, the Lulu is not surprising me. It is a champion that was banned away from them in the previous game. And I'm expecting this to go in Febivin's hands, but it can go to Odawam in the top lane if they want to. So Lucian also picked in, locked in once again. That Lucian Thresh combo worked very well for Kianan and AOD in the previous matchup. Kianan, of course, picking up a number of kills. Are we going to see Brown once again for Voidal? Wasn't overly impressed by it, honestly. He, he needs to hit more ultimates. Yeah. Unfortunately, in the previous game, the very first, you know, the first few glacial fishes that he put down. Not just the ultimates, did the work stuns. Out. I think I remember seeing one stun potentially yeah. throughout the whole game. It really didn't work out that well, but unfortunately, they were playing from behind for a, an incredibly long period of time. <laughs> I'm loving the uh, the crowd right now. They've got their phones out, I think it is. I'm not too sure. The glow sticks are either out there anyway. Shivana looks like it may well get picked up once again. There are the crowd. It is a packed house here in the Wembley Arena in London, England. It's great to have this event here. And you know what? NIP, they are not adjusting their flow. They feel what they had in previous game worked out for them. And of course, I'm not convinced. Nor am I. Now, they ran Elise in the jungle previously. It is still available if they want to go that route. And the knockups from Shivana and from Brahm were not enough to get Exile going in the previous game. So for them to recommit to the same strategy, I think they may realize that it was individual mechanical mistakes that ended up costing them that previous game. So uh, if they fix them, maybe it can work. But at, at this point in time, they really need to do something drastically different. Well, you can see H2K playing with the crowd. Don't think we're going to see Shaco in the jungle. Nor do I. It would be nice, but... But Trashy, Trashy does play a, a whole bunch of champions. I, oh. I'm expecting Jarvan. I mean, it worked so well previously. Yep. Why not stick with it? Exact same combo, just the different laner in the top there. So it will be Lulu yep. top lane. That means LeBlanc being locked in. It's going to be Febivim once again up against Exile on Yasuo. <laughs> so we're not, seeing, oh, be team. we're not seeing a drastic difference, okay? H2K have committed to a similar playstyle to the previous game, where they've got this very tanky uh, front line, you know, where Ooh. they're going to have Lulu, they're going to have Jarvan. And they've got multiple knockups. The only thing is, I do feel there's less damage from H2K now. Jax will offer more damage in the mid to late game than Lulu will. But Lulu's going to offer more utility. So assuming Trash and Febivin get off to another strong start, then yes, they've got a great amount of tools. What I do like from NIP, 
Vi can help Exile get knockups with that stand aside uh, when she throws the Assault and Battery down. It is a displacement, it can uh, get people down. But what I really like is he can lock onto LeBlanc or he can lock onto Lucian and say, we want you dead, we're going to kill you, remove you from the fight, and then just try clean up the rest. We need to see if they can make it work. Yeah, a lot more knockups. Maybe that's why they realized Exile's ultimate wasn't going to use quite enough, and they yeah. this time can single out Hyanan. For now, though, we're going to check out your tweets once more. Now that H2K leads the series by one game, will they take it here? Or can NMP force a third game? Send us your hashtags at LOLE Sports and use the hashtag H2KWIN or hashtag NIPWIN. And we're going to be checking those out in picks as the game gets started. So pre-game, 88% in favor of NIP. We had yep. the first Twitter, it switched to 50-50. And after this 1-0, I'm going to predict it's going to be in favor of H2K. Look at that, going out there. After they won it up. <laughs> what, a, what a brave prediction from uh, Trevor there. So what do we think? Predictions overall with the pick and bans? Uh, a much more active gank pattern from Ko. He needs to interrupt Jarvan. He needs to interrupt Trashy. I think different warding might be key. We've seen the Dragon Pit playing into favor. I think for NIP to be successful, they do not, they cannot afford to let Trashy get ahead. So different ward placements and more active ganking or counter ganking is definitely has to be on the, the cards for Ko. Even though Vi is a little weak until six, he needs to try to stop back. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Game two underway live in the Wembley Arena, which is what we all know it as here in London. H2K, they're 1-0 up. Can they go all the way? Can they do a clean sweep? NIP has the red team defending their title, honestly, because they were the champions back in the spring split. However, despite their 3 to 7 hour epic with Millennium, they did not get into the LCS. No, they did not, and the same partially passive style of play is still in them today. They fell behind and they were unable to break that lead that H2K had built up. So flag misses. No, it landed. Did it kit? It landed, it landed. He lost it. Touché. Touché. So advantage H2K, they're in the lead. They've got the damage <laughs> dealt drafts are in their favor. Oh, Freeze is taunting off the side there, sniffing his cheese, taking a little nibble. Does Twitch have cheese? Did you not see him pull the cheese out? I'm just checking. Just, I'm just, I'm just checking. You're not watching the screen, man. I'm, I'm thinking. I'm, I'm thinking about this game because the problem for Ko and Vi is a lot of the uh, LCS level junglers are talking about how strong and effective she can be. But the reason we're not seeing it here in Europe all that often is because of her weak pre-6 ganking ability and etc. So there's some split decisions into how weak she is early, but NIP. once she hits 6, it's very, very simple and, and crowd's proving me wrong. Yeah. Voting in favor of NIP. Maybe they're doing it on purpose. Maybe they are. Prove that guy wrong. Scumbag. 61%. Scumbag. Quickshot doesn't know what he's on about. Let's change this. <laughs> Vote against him. So, no Pink Ward was picked up early on. I don't think I can see any. No, nothing was placed. So, no. Pink Ward was picked up early by Ku last time around. Hasn't gone for it this time around. So, standard starts from everyone, of course. You got the double Doran's rings. Well, single Doran's rings. But Odo Omne and Forbidden up against the Doran Blades in the other lanes. Also, head to head lanes. Previously, uh, NIP had. Uh, started the lane swap on the top side to try and maybe shut down Oduwamna. It didn't work out really because he kept farming. And also, uh, Void will spend most of his time babysitting Mozilla, if you remember. Now that we've got straight up lanes, I actually think Mozilla's going to have another difficult time against Oduwamna, being melee against the ranged poke um, of Lulu, and then dealing with those glitter lances is going to be incredibly frustrating. So, Mozilla, again, he's on the same champion, but he needs to have a bigger impact. Yeah, the early pressure definitely going towards HGK. You can see level two hit first by Oduwamne in this top lane. Down the bottom lane, it's also going to get hit first. So already NIP on the back foot. Trashy on the red buff. Blue buff for Coke. Both going around. No invades by either team. So no advantage this early on. But again, this is the line max up we saw again. You can see Exile already being aggressed upon by Forbidden. So we need to see how Trashy handles now the straight up lanes. Because he had the lane swap previously, he was able to pull resources from elsewhere and go for that uh, gank in the middle lane. And oh, he's Ooh, caught Freeze. That's a great hook onto Freeze there. Quick damage dealt out. Voidal tries to block the rest of it, but the damage was done on Freeze. Yeah, very well done. That's going to give so much pressure in this lane 
uh, in favor of H2K. Yes, Braum is very strong and is definitely uh, a favorite support in, in many people's eyes, but he is very weak against ranged uh, poke supports like Thresh. And we've seen in the LCS as well how uh, Thresh plus whatever lanes can punish and bully him around. Only once Voidal gets more levels and ideally gets closer to six, does he then become somewhat of an engaged support, you know, in, in many respects similar to Leona. Piven once again being aggressive on Exile in the mid lane. Exile <laughs> doing a good trade this time around, swishing his way around, managing to catch on towards him. This time, of course, Ko, I'm expecting Ko to be focusing a little bit more on this mid lane because Forbiven was just allowed to run away with it last Yeah, game. I think so too. I really like the, the play there by Exile. He actually timed his poke or his trade just in time to land multiple sweep extracts from his E and then dash back to safety from that last minion. So it does show he's got a, a good mechanical ability on this champion. And Ko, with Flash, with that uh, Vault Breaker, it's not the strongest of um, crowd controls, but doesn't look like he even wants to. No, he's just in down as a precautionary measure, but they already saw that the ward was placed, of course. Being on, uh, Vi can manage to dash across, just as Trashy can do, of course. Just that single Vault Breaker to dash across in towards those bushes. So maybe trying to get into some sneaky position. He could go middle. Trashy last time. Exile's in trouble. Exile's very deep on this one. Oh, he's caught up, locked up. The stun's there. He's going to have to try and get away from this one. The flag attack comes in. It doesn't quite catch, doesn't knock him up, but Exile's still very low from this one. Trying to dash away from the minions. Any more hits will do. You can see one more last hit. There it is. It's going to be forbidden once again with first blood. Exile taking them on a walk around. Unfortunately, the flash not getting him far away. AOG continues to punish Freeze and Voidal. That's an ignite. That's an ignite. Might use Voidal with Unbreakable, stopping the majority of the damage there, but Freeze once again taking very low on health. Yeah, and he's behind on CS. Uh, Yarn and AOD just continuing to punish this lane out. Relic Shield starts for both AOD and Voidal, and it's it's all about H2K again. The first aggressive play that Exile made in that, that middle lane, and he gets punished for it. Trashy just happens to be going past, and a little unfortunate, but very well played by H2K. They responded well. Yeah, Trashy coming across to defend out this mid lane. That bottom lane duo is working very well. Hyun and AOD very much on the same page. You know, we were questioning AOD at the start to see whether he's going to be as effective alongside Hyun on this big stage, where it doesn't seem to be affecting him so far. This top lane, though, Ko coming in, and he's going to get around the backside of Oduamne. Oduamne has used that speed already to try and get away. Good flash away from that Vault Break. Successful gank from Ko. He's on level 5, so he's getting close to having that Assault and Battery unlocked. And once he has that, he needs to rinse and repeat that gank. He needs to come top lane, shut down Odawamne, alternatively go middle lane, because both Febivin and Odawamne are flashless. They're, they're, they're less likely to get away. So, uh, good gank by Ko, especially in a pre-6 Vi. Fiendish Codex picked up early by Odawamne there, realizing, of course, there's no magic resist for Mozilla, so hoping he can get some of that damage down early onto him, perhaps with those glitter lances. Febivin in this mid lane. Dominant performance by him in the last game and looking to try and continue that flow. Already putting a lot of pressure on towards Exile. Exile clearly very confident in the fact that he's got this play. Void will go very aggressive, has to quickly step back to freeze there. Dangerous play by him. That unbreakable doesn't stop everything. No, it really doesn't. I think he's just trying to prevent as much damage Ooh. on the tower as possible. But he's at like, you know, killing threat because of all the damage and the poke he's taken. There's no more pots in that bottom lane. And Exile, oh, that's a great chain. It's a great chain landing on him. Exile just can't get involved in this fight anymore. Trashy hanging on around the side. You can see just in the bush was the jungler trying to cover this one off. Voidal has backed away, so three. They're going to tower currently. Down. Will they go for it? They do hook on towards Freeze. They do follow through. AOD not too sure he wanted to follow that one. But Freeze is going to try and take advantage of this one. Can't lock on towards AOD. Still no ultimates available for any of these players in spot lane. That was actually very lucky on AOD's part. He followed through the death sentence, but no damage had landed under the turret range. It was targeting Hyanin. So luckily, AOD manages to take a very long ride and walks away instead of having a turret aggro. H2K are just outplaying ninjas in pajamas across the map. Every single one of their roles is pulling ahead, is playing more aggressively. And look at the CS difference between Hyanin and Freeze. That's a very big amount at the eight minute mark. Yeah, and it's actually equated to a Vampiric Scepter versus a BF Sword. That's a big difference between the two AD carries. Mozilla in this top lane, he's taking pressure. They've both hit their ultimate levels. You can see Oduamne just that little bit ahead right now, keeping the CS advantage up as well. Ko's gonna get that red buff. He's gonna hit that ultimate level in just a moment. So we'll see whether he starts to make some ganks. He's got to really start focusing on I've got a feeling he's gonna run away with this game once again. Yeah, Ko needs to 
he needs to be successful on this first assault and battery gang. Um, much like Twisted Fate's first destiny, if Ko doesn't get somebody ahead, it's a big cooldown. They're going in. There he is. He's gone towards it. Distortion was already used by Vivins. That's why he's going to get locked down. Very well played there. Flash and Assault and Battery working brilliantly for Ko. Yeah, very nicely done. It was actually just the Vault Breaker. Didn't even need the Summoner yes. spell. But what I really like is the timing. There was no hesitation. Oh, Voidal's been caught. He's in trouble now. Voidal trying to go aggressive. Good Vault Breaker there. Uh, sorry, Vault Breaker. Unbreakable blocking out that damage, which immediately leads them towards this Dragon. I think these two members could probably take it themselves because that bottom lane's having serious problems. Yeah, no support from Trashy. He was all the way top lane. And with Feather Evan being dead, NIP was a very smart play. What I do like about the gank middle, the moment Forbidden used that distortion from his W, Ko just threw in instantly because he realized the number of options was not there. And of course, Ko no longer, uh, uh, Forbidden doesn't have flash. They've caught Voidal again. Another hook on towards him, but again, a breakable off. Just in time, Volbreaker goes down. Freeze needs to get some damage down on this one because Voidal's in all sorts of trouble. That's not going to quite be enough with the cull in. And this NIP bottom lane is in all sorts of problems. It's a 40 CS gap currently between Freeze and Hyanan. That's the difference of two kills worth of CS at this stage in the game. And Freeze was able to tank up some of those culling shots, which did allow him, oh, very close, did allow him to save Voidal's life. But because Freeze and Voidal have not been able to recall, it means there's all of that pressure on the tower, which will be secured after the CS has been denied. And it opens up the blue buff for deep wards from HDK. Look at the vision they've got. So they're going to make a play on this next spawn in a few minutes' time. Kiana making sure that tower takes down every last minion until he clears them out there. So. Big differential in this bottom lane. The mid lane is still very much even this time around, of course, with that gank on Forbidden from Ko. Maybe coming again oh, here, charging up this time. Yeah, like you say, without the ulti and distortion wasn't used. So Ko not able to pull the trigger. Though Forbidden senses something's up. He hasn't spotted Ko, though. So Assault and Battery still a little while away, 20 seconds on the clock. And if, if XL can get his own knockup and then chain the damage, maybe they can, but this is going to be very risky. They're waiting for Ko's Assault and Battery. Trash is nowhere near, so it's just a patience game. Ko's either going to make a successful tower dive here, or he's going to have wasted uh, 20 seconds of time. I think they're waiting for Distortion to be used by Forbidden as well. To maybe try and go from Exile, clearly trying to bait this one out. We can see just in the bottom there, Void is going to come up. He's going to spot out that pink ward. Assault and Battery is available. See where the Forbidden They're gonna go in. goes aggressive. I'm not sure. Oh. Oh. Charged it up, didn't go for it. Ping ward cleared. Maybe Ko's just yeah. having a cup of tea. Well, maybe. We are in London after all. <laughs> maybe he is. There is uh, no English <laughs> people. There's only a few people that enjoy tea, apparently. There's only a few, yeah. I think the whole of China may uh, argue with you on that one. There's, there's a few people that live there as well. <laughs> NIP, though, they keep pushing this bottom lane. 96 CS to 51. Big, big differential. Kyanan with a huge advantage. Hasn't quite got that Bloodthirster completed yet, though. H2K reacting. Three members coming down here. There is a ward there, so Trash is spotted out. He's going to have to dive and commit to this one. There's no tower, remember, for NIP to fall back on. So Trash is well within his rights to dive on this one. Cataclysm still available. Hasn't used it yet. Gets knocked up by Voidal. There's the Cataclysm catching him out there. Voidal's going to get locked up there. He's in all sorts of trouble. Kyanan, easy, easy kill for H2K. Yeah, the NIP do look to set something up in the top lane, but Oduwamne is able to get away. Here comes Exile. Oh, he goes straight on towards him. Face check from Oduwamne there. Flashes a Cross to the white on the left-hand side. Exile just dash across towards him. Has got flash available, but not going to follow because they didn't really have vision of Febivan in that mid lane. H2K are pushing the bottom lane. They've got the numbers advantage. They've got a lot of HP to work with. And a minion wave is just backed up as well. So NIP, uh, they didn't commit resources to attacking the top lane tower. Instead, Mozilla has backed away to defend. Oh, they've caught Exile. Febivan once again going in towards him. Gets the chains down. Trashy comes around. Flag and drag forces the flash away from Exile, and the NIP on the back foot once again in this match. And look how smart H2K are. After the presence in the middle lane, they just rotate their members from bottom to mid, and they're going to secure another tower here. Very, very smart play and uh, positional from the players. So H2K, big advantage. Two to zero in towers. Good win wall there from Exile to block out that death sentence, which would have landed. However, H2K stacking that gold up. With those two towers going down, they're going to go off and purchase a bunch of items. Bloodthirst are now completed. Morella Nomicon, of course, on Oduwamne in this top lane as well. Uh, Morella Nomicon by Forbidden in their mid lane as well. Everybody starts to stack out in time for this next dragon. So something that I didn't highlight in Picks and Bands that is a threat from Ninjas in Pajamas is all of their damage is physical. 
you have this tiny bit of magic coming out of Mozilla and Shivana, yes, but it's not what you would consider a threat. And that's the reason that Forbiven and Oduwamne have gone Morella and Nomicon instead of Athens and Holy Grail. They don't need the additional MR from the Chalice and from uh, the Athens. So they can just prioritize, get the healing reduction, and work themselves towards maybe some armor-based items in the later stages of the game. Because once H2K hit that point where there are Hourglasses and Randian's Omens uh, on their team, MIP's damage threat gets significantly reduced. And when you've got this all physical composition, you need to get ahead, and you need to get ahead fairly early on so that you can continue punishing and extend that time frame where uh, H2K need to prioritize armor. NIP are not out yet. They are still within this time frame where they can make a few more plays, but they need to get towers, dragons, and kills very quickly before they run that risk. Remember, HDK already have that 1 0 lead. Mozilla again getting poked in this top lane. Oda One, they continue to just work him down with those basic attacks. He hasn't really used a Glitz Arms. There's a Glitz Arms landing. You can see Mozilla. Can't really do anything in reply to Odo Omni at the moment. Stop. But he's still farming well. Uh, Odo Omni has put a lot of time into uh, bullying Mozilla away, but Mozilla is still relevant in CS. There was a gank from Ku, don't, don't forget that, which of course would help him out. But again, he's staying relevant. So, Glacial Fissure is available from Voidal. He needs to hit targets so that Exile can execute them. But Hyanin and AOD are uh, wisely going up the river, and they're going to find the support of the teammates. I mean, they've completely mitigated all of the threat that Ninja the Pajamas had from that lane. Yeah, they were trying to set up that gank, and it is not working out. Blue Buff just spawned out there. Ping Ward has been found by H2K, so that's going to clear out the vision that NIP had around that Dragon Pit area. And now with that Dragon now spawning, NIP going to have to pick up this Blue Buff fast. NIP lost the previous game because of poor engages around the Dragon Pit. They cannot afford to do the same. They are 3,000 gold down. They have secured their own blue, and th there's going to be a big fight. Oh, they were delaying on that blue, but if he does get taken by Kodo, manages to finish it off. They're going to lock on towards AOD. AOD going down. That's going to be one kill picked up. You can see it's going to go on there. Kogo taken down as well on the side there, but the rat's got himself a double kill. Locking on towards Yana. Yana in all sorts of trouble. Mozilla's going to keep on chasing towards him. Has the burnout run out? He can't quite close the distance. Doesn't matter. Locks him back down. And off the side there for Bivens. Going to get caught out. The shield just enough from Oda One. They they're going to have to try and find him. Freeze is stealthing up. He's going to try and freeze on towards. Him. Him. He doesn't want to catch on towards Oduwamne. Oduwamne, no manner, of course, for Freeze. Tries to turn it back around. Has he got the stun? Locks him up, but he hasn't got the damage. Has to flash away from it. Now Oduwamne, he's going to get locked out again. The catch on towards him. Can it be enough? Mozilla comes in. Quick stand the side gets in towards there. Voidal chasing on towards Verbiven. Verbiven distorts away. And I think they're safe now. And this fight's gone on long enough that everybody has respawned. It ended up being a three for two. And NIP managed to come away from that one mostly okay. If it wasn't for Voidal saving Freeze with a great concussive blows passive, he would have gone down. But very importantly, look at how quickly Exile throws his ultimate down. He only caught AOD. I mean, Forbidden was caught out by Ko. Had that last red boot been used a second or two later, the fight could have been a lot more convincing. Featherman is able to get a summoner heal. He gets a whole spell reel off. And I do think NIP did a good job at focusing uh, Yon and Down out early. But unfortunately, that last breath needed to have been more important. Dragon was not secured. So we're going to see this fight again. Look at the ultimate counters. There's a lot that are not available. Seconds out round two. NIP this time around going to try and focus on H2K. Ultimates are not available. Ratatat -tat is down and that's going to be H2K secure in this one. Dragon Descent. Mozilla pounces across but misses the entire team. Mozilla's going to get dropped down on the side there. He's in all sorts of trouble. Ko's going to go low as well. Trash is going to get focused down. That's another kill booked up by Freeze but NIP are in all sorts of trouble. Voidal gets singled out as well. That's a double. That's a triple for Oda Wamne in the top lane. Fantastic stuff. And this this time, NIP with no ultimates available should not have engaged. NIP had nothing to fight for. Dragon had been secured by H2K Gaming. NIP seen it going down. They were trying to pick up some stragglers on the sideline. And after Mozilla committed to the fight, the rest of the team were like, oh, hang on a minute. We don't have the tools. Look at this. Mozilla's coming in fairly late from the top half. Dragon is secured. And then they start a fight. They didn't have the tools available. Not only do NIP lose the Dragon, they lose three kills, and they've lost a mid in, uh, in a turret because of their play. I, I, I can't understand the decision making. That was very well played by H2K. They had the positional advantage. They punished NIP for engaging, and they've just accelerated further ahead. And this is exactly like game one, NIP making mistakes, making miscalculations, missed calls at the Dragon, and H2K reacting very well to this. And now the fact there's a 4-0 Lulu, 
Rabinon's death cap won't be too far away for him. Rabinon's death cap once that gets picked up by Fibib, and we know what it's going to be like. HDK closing in, and NIP, they need to realize just how far they fell behind after those two fights. Yeah, the problem for NIP is exactly the same as the previous game, that they need to pick a fight because their composition is just all in, even more so now with Vi. Um, the only tools Ninjas in Pajamas have to play with is big team fights. HDK don't necessarily have a big split pushing champion on their side. Lulu has, can do that okay, uh, but it's not something you, 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 you think of primarily when you see a top lane Lulu. So HDK can play this one patient, wait for another objective to, to fight over, and force an IP's hand. If they win the team fight, hey, they get more inner turrets. So Odawamne in this top lane, he's got two on him. Mozilla, of course, that Dragon Descent the last fight completely missing off the side. Code not going to focus on this one because H2K, they've got four members in this mid lane. And I've been in to react to this, they could push straight through. And, you know, after all the hype we were talking about Ko and after all the previous games where Ko's performed, at least previously, he had little to no impact uh, in the bigger picture. And now his Vi has taken so long to get going. This is not what we associate with this jungler. This is not what we're used to seeing. So anyways, blue buff there looked like uh, HTK were moving themselves in. They've got a lot of numbers in the bottom half of the map. NRP will secure themselves an uncontested tower. But it looks like HTK are trying to set something up. They're trying to make plays. And again, they've got very deep vision. The minimap has always been uh, HTK vision dominated. He's thought about the ambush there for Bivin. As soon as he used that distortion, he made his move towards him. But really with, as you mentioned, lack of vision, no knowledge about where everybody in HTK is. So, everybody resetting, everybody stacking out those items. Death Camp almost complete by Forbidden. That was the needle large rod just popping into vision. Rapidon's Death Camp has been picked up by Oda Wamne in this top lane, which Mozilla still yet to complete. He's got that spectral cowl on there, yet to complete an item though. Mercury Tread's also picked up, but again, falling behind in obviously not only kills, but CS. So that is one thing that does play into NIP's favor, is if Mozilla can start split pushing and pull some threat from Jarvan, from Lulu, it will open up other areas of the map. But in order to make that work, NIP has to be on the same level of communication. Mozilla needs to say, hey, I'm going to try and draw aggro. I'm trying to try and pull Oruwamne or Fibivit or, or Trashy my direction. And when they do, sneak a tower, grab a dragon, try to flank somebody. It isn't the case right now because Mozilla is still working his way towards this Blade of the Rune King. He's still working his way up in items. But it is a tool they have available to them. Uh, and it, it just seems as though NIP are waiting for H2K to make mistakes. And H2K simply aren't doing them. And let's talk about H2K because Forbidden, when DreamHack was going on, said, you know, the best challenger team is not there to compete with NIP. They called themselves out and said, we would have won DreamHack if we'd have gone there. Instead, they did not. This time around, though, they are looking like a shoe-in for a 2-0. They have a solid, solid lead in this game. And NIP are trying to set up for something here. H2K trying to bait them out, but NIP not going to fall for it just yet. It's a, it's a ward fight in the bush. Yeah, the, the, the statement definitely paying dividends thus far. They've had very clear strategic moves from the opening minutes of every game. The previous match, it was very clear. We want to shut down Exile. Uh -oh. oh, Freeze is going to die. This, gonna, it's a rat trap. It's a rat trap. It's going to come out of ambush, but... Wasn't quite enough to draw him out there. It hasn't sprung yet. <laughs> the, rat, the rat trap has been uh, enabled. I'm just going to uh, say that's that's pretty cheesy. Uh, not, not bad. Not bad. We'll have to see. <laughs> sorry, guys. Sorry, <laughs> sorry. I don't know. We'll have to see how NIP pull themselves back into this game because, as it stands, they simply they simply haven't made the right decisions. The, you know, previous game and this game, their team fight selection has been mediocre at best, and then they haven't executed when they have picked those team fights. So NIP, you can definitely feel they're running scared. And it's up to H2K, uh, it's up to them to break H2K's lead. Somebody needs to deal with Oduwamne. The rest of H2K are coming around, and NIP are way too slow to react to this one. This is going to be a tower going down. Yeah, and you know, Lulu, not somebody you traditionally call a split pusher. Oduwamne's done it. He's 4-0. He's now pulled ahead of CS. He's got a good item uh, lead. And it looks like NFP want to fight. Look at Ko, he's going to come from the sidelines. A multi-man knockup has to happen in order for NIP to win. And actually, they backed off. Yeah, they, they don't even want the fight. They got no vision. That's the problem. They could not go in there. Dragon's going to be up in five seconds' time. And NIP, once again, absolutely no vision whatsoever of this river. H2K could pull the trigger. You can see NIP going to try and create and force some pressure on this mid lane through it. H2K coming across the side in 
force. And a Co is going to have to get away. Damage. It's going to go on towards Obi Wan. Now you saw the damage on towards Freezer. Freezer's already running. The NMP do not want this fight. Freezer's already backing away. He's calling for everybody to back off. And they do eventually. But H2K, you can see, clearly much stronger now in this game. Yeah, completely bullying them away. Because Freezer was dropped to 50% HP, NIP were not willing to risk a team fight where he could get just assassinated. Ironically, you could put an argument forward that was H2K grouping. NIP had a great opportunity for a good combo of ultimates. Doesn't work out. So Dragon secured by H2K, and NIP just run away. Tails between their legs. They're, they're not interested in anything H2K wants from them. Yeah, NIP, they thought about forcing that mid lane. It was only AOD that was holding off. And again, it's still five wanted turrets now. What is Ko waiting for? Is it going to be the AD carry? I'm not sure he can take Kyanan, you know. I don't think that he can. He's got some armor, but oh, he's going to try. He does have the support of both Exile we go, and yeah. Freeze. He's going to time it. Kyanan's going to be in a little bit of trouble. Good ball breaker knocks him off. Assault battery follows. Exile comes pounding in, and Kyanan goes down. So they've got one kill. What does it mean? Unless NIP can convert this into a tower, it's not worth a whole lot. Dragon was secured by H2K. NIP are still 5k gold down. And look, it's a start. It's a start. They've got pick champions. Yeah, they've drawn them away from the bottom lane, and that's enough for Mozilla to get in there with a big minion wave. He may be able to take this tower There's down. Damage. He's got plenty of time to do the damage onto this one. I don't think Odawam can get close enough. He could teleport in, but I don't think he's going to fancy it. That tower's gone. Yeah, it does look to be the case. So Mozilla is going to secure that tower. It is the split pushing Shivana that we've talked about. If he decides to continue keeping Odawam's attention, the rest of the team could look to set up another pick but it actually came the other direction. It was NIP making a pick and then allowing Mozilla to split push. And I think NIP need to keep doing that. They need to get better wards in the map and they need to just get more of those solo kills because it's quite apparent that H2K simply have better team fighting ability this series. H2K continue to keep full vision. If you just look at the map, just see there's next to no wards placed by MIP right now. They need to get some sort of vision down there. Pink ward placed by Voidal, but look at that. It's just all darkness by MIP. They have no clue what is going on, no information. No, and it's, it also explains why they're running so scared. H2K again with a heavy four, five man invade. That's the third time this game that H2K have grouped up as four, five and invaded NIP's jungle for vision. And they've even got themselves a Scrying Orb to once again, if they want to go for those heavy invades, to make sure they've got the information to work with. It's very intelligent play from H2K Gaming, and uh, you just have to give them credit. I mean, they pulled themselves up again, you know, 4,000 gold lead. They're trying to break this inner line of turrets, and we'll see how they, how they siege. Oh, Voidal just getting away from that one. Breakable coming up just at the right time to stop those chains coming on. Oh, they've caught out Freezes in that top lane. He's actually gonna evacuated run in. They may try and run him down here. You can see they're splitting off. There's two going left, two going right. They're not going to quite close the gap on him, though. Ko is there. The rest of NIP had reacted. It was a dangerous, dangerous fight to take. So Freeze does have his red buff. It will help him somewhat in his opening fight. Still unkilled this game. 3-0-1-1. They're going go in. They're going in, but AOD was caught out. Not too sure that's the one that Exile wanted to focus on. Exile himself is in also trouble. He's going to go down. Ko out the flash out of this one as well. Oduwame does take down Exile. Now you can see Mozilla taking all the damage. We can see Febivan flashing in towards it. The Ignite's not quite enough to take him down there. It was a one for one big trade, but that's going to be the tower for H2K. It's not over yet. Yana chasing Voidal. Unbreakable is not going to be enough to stop all the damage from Yana. He does just about hold out. There is the tower going down. Objective control once again for H2K. They're going to back out, but another tower goes their way. We have to ask NIP, what is the strategy? That was a last breath again on only the support while Lulu was still present. You Didn't always you knew, it? you always knew Wild Ghost was coming down. You always knew that was going to be used. I, I'm not quite sure what NIP were thinking. I think very good play from HDK. They managed to respond effectively. They get the tower down. Trading a jungler for a mid laner is a trade any day that these teams will take. And HDK again just extend that lead further. They extend the map presence. They're maintaining vision control. And itemization wise, Deathcap, Morella, Nomicon, the makings of a Void Star from Febivant versus a Pickaxe, Cloak of Agility, and a Static Shift. Exile doesn't even have a large amount of attack damage built up. He's relying purely on that critical hit chance. To try and land the combo, but again, if you can't kill the support with your ultimate, then you are not in a good situation for the mid laner. Kyanan at the moment looking to try and catch on towards them. 
And then IP again in a dangerous position. Well, we'll see if the death sentence can land. That's a very good slow from Voidal, as well as Unbreakable, oh, and he needs to get his ultimate down. He's going to get caught now. Flag and Dragon That's going to go in there. He tries to be the sacrificial lamb, but the rest of the team get locked up by that. Dragon Strike jumping in towards their coat, trying to cause some damage on towards it. Yan and Kors out there. Oduwamne being focused on the backside. The Oduwamne will go down. Can Freeze get taken out? Yes, he will. He'll go down. The Bivin running away from this one. It's a good fight for NIP so far. They're going to lock on to Trashy. Trashy goes down. The Bivin caught out a little too close. He's thought away. And this time around, it's a three for two, a two for NIP. So that is a very important trade for the Ninjas in Pajamas because they needed to get the gold off of their opponents. Yes, three for two trade means H2K uh, are not super far behind in gold, but NIP need it more. They need to continue picking up uh, these kills and these trades. And that was actually a turnaround where Voidal was caught and he didn't have access to his Glacial Fissure. Had he been able to put that slowdown in that channel, it would have gone much better. And Freeze, his positioning was pretty good, but then he had to come in deeper to continue being relevant. And uh, he's about to get turned and focused on by both AOD and Trash. So, uh, pretty good fight overall for NIP. But if they had ultimates, they could have been there. Honestly, if it wasn't for that death sentence from Trashy there, uh, from AOD there, I think that could have been an ace. I think I think they may well have wiped out H2K. Okay. But death sentence landed, took him down. And just like the last game, NIP do manage to win themselves out a team fight. Can they do anything with it? Last time they just went headlong into H2K, got caught out. Voidal once again burst down. Half his hit points gone down. Oduwamne locks on that unbreakable, just about saving his life. Dragon is now up, and he's going to have to go back and top off that health. I would say that definitely saved his life. And I would also say NIP have banned Morgana in both of the games they played, which is AOD's. Uh, sort of primary support that we've seen the competitive scene. Oh, they're going for Yana. They're locked in. Yana, they're going to focus him down, but again, one growth is enough to save the day. Now he's off the side, untouched. Exile getting focused down. That's going to get clocked off. It's AOD with a kill. Now they're going to chase on towards it. Forbidden distortion was used. He can't chase him down. NIP trying to engage, catching out the AD carry, but they just don't have enough damage. They can't. The wild growth from Lulu with that death cap is so, so massive. H2K Gaming, they know they've got a numbers advantage. They've started Baron. Now, Ko does have Assault and Battery. He didn't use it in that previous fight, and he does have Smite. This is going to be very risky. Uh -oh. Oh. Ko getting caught out. Oh, Forbidden's going to lock him down. He's going to get caught out. Oh, the one they on him as well. Three members lock him down. AOD gets himself a second kill. And that's going to be the Baron for H2K. Once again, NIP caught out again. Floundering. Ninjas in pajamas are simply floundering. H2K are working as a unit. Ninjas are not. And, you know, you do have to call it out that AOD on Thresh has been very impactful this matchup. I think his death sentences have been good. And remember, NIP, as I was saying before, they banned Morgana. And AOD's just like, well, that's fine. I'll just switch to Thresh, you know? You've got to play at this level, and he's, he's doing well. But the rest of the team, Following Trashy's lead, supported by Febivin, and this time it's a much more team effort from everyone, but very, very well played, and they continue to uh, grow this lead. Yeah, like you say, from the pick and bounce, it seems a clear goal from H2K. They knew exactly what they wanted to play. They played the same composition both times around, just switching jacks out for Lulu, and it's worked brilliantly. Oduwamne, honestly, in this series, has been the man to watch. 5-1-4 on Lulu, fantastic stats on Jax. He was at, what, 80 CS, I think, in the lead of, over uh, Mozilla in the last matchup. Mozilla himself, 1-0-6, not doing too bad on Shivana. Much better performance this time around. But the rest of his team, they're in all sorts of trouble. Freeze has got going. He's got 5-1-3, he's got the kills. They just need to get the positioning right, and they need to buy him a little bit of free time and maybe protect the rat rather than diving in headlessly. So something that we haven't seen HTK do in either of the games is, is a, a, a legitimate siege. We haven't seen them set themselves up in a tower situation where they're sort of facing off 5v5. And it, it ends up working quite nicely because if they do put themselves in that siege, they do run the risk of getting caught out by those Yasuo Brown combo. Uh oh. It's the first time they're going to be trying. Look at the damage on Freeze. That's going to be Freeze having to back off. That's going to be an inhibitor turret going down. H2K all over this one. Meanwhile, you can see Mozilla trying his best to split push. He's going to teleport in. Where's he going to go, though? He has to time. go back to the base at the side there. Ko off the side. He's going to get spotted out. What's he going to do? He's going to have to run away from this one. He can't get involved. And that was a simple, simple inhibitor taken by H2K. Positional mistake from Ninjas of Pajamas punished perfectly by H2K. With Super Minions now pushing up the middle lane, they look to siege both the top and the bottom. There are minions pushing in their favor, so now they're going to have the map working for them as well. And I really, really like the decisiveness from H2K. They have not hesitated. The moment somebody's been presented, they have just gone all in. 
They push Freeze away, oh. got that objective. Now, please, don't jump on AOD. If NIP want to win this fight, they need to not focus Thresh down. Oh, but I think they know they're in there. They're going to throw the Death Sentence straight out, quickly blocked out. This time, Exiles get caught out as well. He's going to get locked up and taken down in seconds. The rest of the team trying to jump on Trashy for some god-awful reason. He's just going to walk away from that one, happy to take it all up. Foyle taking very low, Mozilla taking low. Freeze gets picked off of the side there. Code's going to be the last man standing. He goes down. A very easy eight for H2K. They're going to run straight in the mid lane. They're going to take down the Nexus to its Oda 1. They can tank it out. And H2K will take this challenge. Challenger Series Final very easily, 2-0. Two 2-0 zero. Two zero uncontested. Last couple of hits on the Nexus turret before they go down. AOD landing the death sentence through the needle. Catching Freeze. A well-deserved victory. Dominant performance there from H2K, honestly. Never in doubt, I don't think, either of those two games, whether H2K would come out on top. 17 to 10 in that last game. 42 kills in the first match, 27 in this one, but it was all about control. And NIP, just a last ditch effort in the end there, trying to catch out, trying to do a gank, but H2K knew they were there. You have to question the decision making. You have to question why the focus on AOD so many times did we see the potential for good engagements in exile, maybe just a little too trigger happy on that last breath, so, you know, all props to HTK, they had a solid game plan, early game was strong, mid game was strong, the team fight was strong, and completely deserving of the 2 over victory. So that means H2K are the Challenger Series 1 champions, gives them 9 points, I believe. Yeah. Got some at the top of the table, of course. It's quite an important seeding because they're going to go in towards that Challenger playoffs after the summer concludes, after Challenger Series 2 concludes as well, that's yep. going to be coming up. Uh, starting off, I believe it started off last night, I think. I may be wrong. Maybe the online qualifiers. Or next week, yeah. The, the online, online qualifiers, qualifiers could, could be, because of course they do get No those rest for the teams, teams from, that's for sure. Now you get them from Straight the challenge ladder, but I think uh, HTK, fantastic. Absolutely fantastic performance. Uh, NIP were, of course, playing with a substitute, so... You